Good afternoon. It is 2.20 in the afternoon on Wednesday, the 23rd of August, and I'm just going to go real quick over our first lecture. It's about five or six slides, and it is called Before First Contact. Uh, and what this lecture is going to do is going to go over the three groups of people who are going to make up the new world as we know it, uh, the, what becomes basically North America and the British colonies. And I want to first start by talking about Native Americans or indigenous people. Uh, it's thought the indigenous people first came to the Americas uh, by walking from Russia to Alaska somewhere between 10 and 15,000 years ago. Uh, the reason they were able to do this is because of the ice age and the level of the sea was lower, which exposed land connecting Alaska and Russia. Uh, however, as the, the ice started to melt, that land bridge disappeared and now it is underwater. Uh, why did these first people move from Russia into Alaska? Um, quite simply, they're chasing their food. Uh, there were no maps or anything like that at the time, so these first people are just following their prey. And um, that's because these people were hunters and gatherers. There was literally no farming. Uh, we don't get agriculture until about 7,000 to 8,000 years ago. And hunting and gathering is still going to be the primary food source in the Americas until 1000 AD. So the idea of farming here in the Americas is extremely new, believe it or not. Uh, we have some groups like the Hopewell, the Mississippians, the um, the Anasazi. Uh, so we have many different Native American groups that are going to spread out and settle within the Americas. Here in Georgia, the best known Native American group is going to be the Mississippian. Uh, they're known to, for being mound builders. Uh, here in Georgia, you've got the Akmolki mounds, you've got the Etowah mounds, you've got the Kolomoki mounds. If you're familiar with Six Flags, where Six Flags is today um, on the west side of Atlanta, there used to be a city and some mounds there that were bulldozed down. And the most famous of the Mississippian mound sites is called uh, Cahokia, which is near St. Louis. And at, scientists and historians and archaeologists have found evidence of a mega city that held over 40,000 people there. Now, whether we're talking about Native American cultures in the east or west or north, uh, there are some things that are very similar amongst these. One is the idea of kinship. Uh, kinship groups were family groups or related groups that would live together, usually, you know, fairly small numbers. And you might think of them in colloquial terms as tribes, although that is not a term that most historians and anthropologists use today. But these kinship groups are going to teach you about your beliefs, your way of life, your religion, your customs. Uh, these kinship groups are going to teach you, uh, you know, what foods to eat, what foods not to eat, and things like that. So these kinship groups are really going to create the culture. Uh, in most Native American cultures, you also find that gender roles are very equal. Um, depending on where specifically they are, it can be a little less equal. But on the grand scale of things, it's equal. Men and women are both going to be important for bringing food into the household. Uh, both men and women have to work together to maintain the household. Uh, very often in Native American culture, the men are gone for extended period of time because they're the ones chasing the larger game, the larger animals, while the women are doing the stuff around the house and taking care of uh, cows and chickens and whatever else there may be, or hunting for the nuts and berries. Uh, the one thing that is going to be very much male-oriented are going to be religious roles, but even then, in some Native American kinship groups, you find women um, leaders of religion. Native American religion is really cool, too. I highly suggest that you uh, research it if you're at all interested. Um, most Native American cultures believe in a creator god. They believe in prayer and ceremonies and rituals. They believe in an afterlife. They believe in the the life after death of their ancestors, and they would often pray to the ancestors as well. And then another really interesting part of Native American culture is the idea of the trickster. Uh, the trickster is going to be a being or a creature that is used to teach um, morals and teach lessons and, and teach uh, right from wrong. 
The second of the three are Europeans, and um, let's be honest, everything you've learned up to this point in history has been basically European history or taught from a European viewpoint. So you should be more familiar with this, of this than you're not. So we know there's a social hierarchy. There's royalty at the top, whether it be a king or a queen. We know that there are lords of the land. We know there are knights in shining armor. But then you get like the common merchant and you get the peasants and things like that. Uh, most Europeans before Christopher Columbus and that period of time are going to live an agricultural lifestyle. There's only a couple of towns in Europe at that point in time. And because of the Black Death in the 1300s and the 1400s, uh, the idea of the kinship group, it doesn't exist as much. You're just worried about your immediate family. And the, that immediate family becomes the most important part in European life. And in many ways here in America, it still is too. Um, for religion, uh, Christianity is going to keep Europeans together for the most part. Although that kind of changes a little bit when we get to the 1500s with an event called the Reformation. And then last but not least, we have West Africans. Um, this is going to be a, not one big society, but it's thousands of different cultures that stretch um, from basically Senegal down to like Angola or Nambia on the western side of, of Africa along the coast. There are a lot of similarities between Native Americans and West Africans. Uh, the kinship groups are important. Uh, there are shared gender roles. Uh, women are going to maintain the household. Men hunt and raise the livestock. Um, one big difference, though, is that families in West Africa are very much matrilineal, meaning all heredity is traced through the mother. Uh, if a man and a wife get married, they move into the wife's house. If you're the leader of a village or the leader of a uh, kinship group, it will be your sister's son who is the next one to take over, not yours. Um, and you get this interesting mix of native religions uh, mixed with Islam. So you get um, local spirits, but you also get Allah and uh, Islamic influence as well. All right, now, as promised, very short. I hope you watch this. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any suggestions on how I can make this video better for next time, let me know. Uh, but uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.